Hello, I'm Luke. I'm Nikisha, and we're both from the UK. And we've converted this bus, and now we're living in our tiny home. <laughs> BMC Falcon, which is, uh, I think in the US you call a city bus, or over here in the UK we just call um, a bus. Um, it's 13 metres long, um, we used to seat 45 people and was, and was used for commutes and, and school runs in the local area actually. Um, so I think the first thing to establish is this is slightly different to, to other schoolies in, the, in that it doesn't move um, and, and we actually rescued it from a from a scrapyard where it was about to get sawn to pieces. Um, so it sort of came about when, when lockdown struck, I had nothing to do with my weekends. I was, I was stuck at home on the farm with, uh, with very little to do. Um, so we wondered, you know, could there be a way of, of sort of repurposing these old buses um, in, in, and seeing if you could turn that into a, into a tiny home. Um, so, so yeah, so we, we sort of, found the bus. The bus was only uh, £1,300 um, and then got it shipped over on a lorry um, and started work about a year ago. Um, so the fact that it doesn't move changed the brief um, for us in terms of we didn't need to get everything on this sort of rolling house um, and that meant that we didn't need to have a toilet inside, we didn't need to have the shower inside. Um, so we could put things like that outside and then that left us a lot more scope just to make a really nice open space. Um, sort of being on a farm, we sort of set ourselves the brief of could we try and do this kind of hybrid design between sort of a traditional farmhouse features, um, such as shaker kitchen, and, and give it a very sort of farmhousey cabiny feel. Um, but also, we, we we were really conscious that we wanted the bus to still feel very much like a bus. Um, when we went to look at it, actually, it was this roof was one of the reasons that, that we, we sort of chose the bus because we just thought it was really nice, it had this nice shiny quality um, and, and was something that we actually didn't need to change. So we've kind of got this split level design where we've kept the upper tier completely original with all the original lights, all of the original annoyingly CCTV cameras that are anti-tamper so we couldn't get rid of those without having to hit them with a hammer. Um, and then we've kept other original features, sort of chair, steering wheel, which are kind of almost wasted space. We're not sure if there's something we want to do with it that, that might be more practical, but at the same time, it's quite fun just having those original bus features. Um, one of the big challenges of the bus was being a, a, a normal commuter bus was that it's got the disabled access at the front, which, which meant that we had this split tier. So, that, so the, there are all these raises in these, these level changes in the bus, which we started as a challenge, but ended up being something that really started to help us define the different spaces within the bus that we wanted to create. Kitchen, lounge, dining, bedroom, and then sort of arrival space. So down to the, the nitty gritty, show you some of these spaces. So as you come in, we've kept the arrival space or the lobby as you would in a house is completely sort of ready to take dirt. Um, it's not, we haven't put anything nice or exciting on there, but it's really practical. We can come in, we're on the farm, so quite often we've got muddy feet. Um, so this is sort of an area that we're quite happy to, to trash, kept the original red plastic floors. Um, and then we've retained this little cubby hole here um, where we can just shove our shoes, shove our dirty stuff. Um, and then as you come through, being lowered, we've got these massive wheel arches, which you can see the profile here. So as opposed to this being a higher bus where we sort of sit above the wheels or small wheel arches, these really took up a huge amount of space. Uh, so we had to build this cupboard in around to hide the wheel arch, but managed to get our drawers flowing on the top and then managed to retain some of the storage space just in here on top of that um, and butcher the carcass of that kitchen to get that in. And then this space here, we thought it'd be really nice just to have a, a nice sort of low area where we could just come in. It's where we sort of throw our keys, put fruit bowls, some food, and, and just sort of a little welcome hamper. It's really useful 
piece of space. Um, so as you come through, um, something we really wanted, sort of going back to the farmhouse feel, was to have a nice big Belfast sink. Um, and that has proved like so useful, it's really deep so that the splashes of water don't come flying out and get over the wooden worktops. Um, and then we built a tap out of copper pipe, which was uh, a nice feature, we think. Um, we haven't got hot water running straight in. We've kept it as simple as possible, really. Um, so we only have cold water coming in, and then if you want to wash up, we boil the kettle. Um, over here, we've got our fridge freezer, which is an underslung fridge freezer. Um, sort of full size, we're not compromising on on how much space we wanted, um, so we can get a load of food and beers, etc., in there. Um, here we've got uh, two gas burner uh, glass plate hob, um, and then all the drawers underneath, which keep utensils. And then we've got storage down here for pots and pans and stuff like that. Um, tray space, herb rack, and then over here, more storage for food. Um, pots and pans and other kitchen stuff. Um, sort of going back to the open feel, we didn't want to have wall cabinets and we, we loved all the windows that we had running through. So it was really sort of important when we were designing it not to, to start to, to build bulk up on the sides. We wanted to keep it as open as possible. So we used the same beach block worktops that we cut down to make these um, open shelves that run along. Um, and these all run on the trajectory of these upper windows so that that line carries on all the way through the bus. Um, you can see the blinds also hang to that level so you've got this really nice sleep line running along. Um, the only issue with that is, is that you have to be nice and neat and tidy and uh, buy matching plates. Um, so yeah, so I think that's, that's the kitchen and then just the other thing is coat hangers as you come in um, so you can hang your coats up. So coming through, this is the lounge area. So we've got this nice step up, um, which again, as I said, was kind of a challenge to start with, working out how that was gonna be, but it, it ended up making this really nice, slightly raised space. Um, and the other benefit is just the ceiling height you get with a, with a city bus. You can stand up throughout the whole bus, which is really nice. Um, so this is a really simple area. We used these kitchen cabinets um, and just led them on the side so that the storage goes back all the way underneath that sofa. Um, and they're 500 mil wide, so we've got a two meter sofa and then we've got a, a, a custom built cushion to go on top of that. Um, and then the flooring is just a simple uh, tongue and groove pine flooring, um, which is just used for floorboards. And normally in houses, people cover it up with carpet. Um, it's not actually designed, I don't think, to be a display floor, but we thought it was really beautiful flooring um, and wasn't too costly. Um, this is an old piece of furniture we had, an old set of chairs that we upcycled with a, with a chalk paint. Um, and then just all along the sides, we took the original cladding of the bus off um, and then boxed that out, put insulation in, and then just used a, a bead and butt type effect to MDF. So that comes as a massive board of a uh, bead and butt style and you just sit that on. So that allowed us to just clad all of that really quickly, really simply. Um, we do, as I showed, have these lights working um, as the original lights, although they don't give off the nicest lights. So we've brought in our own sort of feature lights here with the copper, which matches the, the taps. So we wanted to keep that theme running through. Uh, one of my favorite features of the bus is this fireplace. So it's a little five kilowatt fire. Um, it's quite small, but it burns beautiful, um, brings a good temperature into the bus, gets us really toasty and cosy in here. Um, we looked at venting the chimney out the window, but wanted to have this feature chimney running up through. So cutting this through the roof was a bit of a challenge, but um, I was really pleased with actually how that came out. Um, and then to set this on, we, we, we didn't obviously can't sit it on the timber, so we actually just built some shutters and just poured, made a concrete mix and just poured in situ concrete. So we've just got this nice concrete slab that that sits on, um, which we think looks really nice actually. We're very pleased with how that, how that finished. One of the things we, we knew we wanted to do was have a, 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 keep it open, but split between the bedroom and the lounge so that you felt like you're transitioning into a different space. 
Um, so we put these up. These aren't structural, um, but these just sort of create this nice doorway that you can walk through as you come through into the bedroom. Um, and then we put these little sideboards here, just so you've got these extra shelves. Um, and, and one thing you don't have a lot of in a bus is shelf space generally, or places to display pictures. So it's really nice just to bring some of these personal elements in um, and places just to put pictures, books, etc. Um, and then the bed, we, we, we've got a back door there that's the original um, emergency exit. Um, so we did think about having the bed all to one side, which you see quite often in schoolies, but decided we just wanted to make this really nice big grand statement bedroom that just looks straight down. Um, so you're sort of king of the castle when you're up in the bed. And then again, we've used sort of matching cabinets, but painted a different color. So we've got storage running all the way under the bed where we keep all of our clothes. Um, we've got these big sideboards here, which you can put stuff on while you're in bed. Um, and then we've got these little lights as well, which just sort of add a little je ne sais quoi to the space. Um, the only place where we've got blackout curtains, because curtains, we realized, uh, not within our budget, um, curtaining an entire bus is extremely expensive. Um, you've probably got more window space in here than you do in most average sized houses. Um, so we decided that actually we just have blackout curtains around the bedroom. Um, so you can completely cocoon yourself in the bedroom um, and then put this on. This is a copper pipe. I think it's just 12 mil copper pipe. And then we could fix, fix that up with these lovely little brass fixed fittings um, and just create this continual curtain rail that runs all the way around the bed. Um, so some other bits and pieces, um, some of the more technical stuff. We've got a TV in here, uh, which sits down here and then we just move it up. And it's a uh, perfect size just to go on there. So you can just flip that round whenever you want to. Um, and then that runs off an aerial, which is just a, a metallic aerial. It's got a great big magnet on there. It's um, it's digital aerial and that just picks up full signal. Um, and I think that was about 15 quid off Amazon. So that seemed like a, a good deal to me. Um, so in terms of getting power to the bus, um, as it's, stationary we, we we did look at doing solar panels but in the uk one thing we don't have in uh, abundance is sunshine um so it kind of meant through the winter that we'd be really struggling to generate enough power in order to power the fridge in particular um, and it also also as the bus doesn't move we don't have any recharging potential so that we, we're not going to be able to charge electricity up so we actually run a cable up from our farm sheds so the bus is kind of on an, an, an umbilical cord, essentially, where we have water and power running up from, from, a, from the sheds about 100 metres away. And then we use sustainable energy suppliers so that we kind of feel that we're, we're, it's still essentially sustainable. And so we're just using another company's solar panels. Um, and then water, um, again, is just mains water. So we get really good water pressure up here. Um, which is great. So I think the next thing to do is show you outside the bus um, and you can come and take a look at our shower and toilet unit. We decided that we'd build this sort of glamping type shower unit. Um, so we've raised it up and put it on skids so that it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't have any foundations. We didn't need to do any digging or, or do any structural damage to the ground. Um, and then in here, we have uh, a standard porta potty. I think they're made in Australia. And then the Shower King glamping shower. Um, so this is um, gas powered. So we have a, a LPG gas canister behind there, and then you just run the pressure through, um, and that gets up to to too hot actually, if you want it to. So and it's as good as any shower I've had in a house. So um, it's really nice getting to to shower shower outside with a view, um, which is awesome. So this was one of the bits whilst I sort of taught myself the, the carpentry that I needed to learn inside. The, the, doing the electrics was one thing where we got in um, a proper proper electrician who knew, knew exactly what he was doing. Um, we, we sort of ran all the wires and worked out where we wanted to have all of the power points and plugs and fridge etc inside um, and then um, got the professional to, to wire it in but we've got a um, a fuse box here and then this is just your standard um, I think 
um, sort of campsite plug-in that you'd get for a, for any kind of RV or caravan. So this is the, the garden space, or just one of the little elements of the garden space, which we love. And as you can see, it is just these beautiful panoramic views of the, of the countryside, which is awesome. So it's, it's so tranquil, um, it's so peaceful, um, and, and sort of stress doesn't seem to exist now that I'm living here, which is really, really nice and quite a change from when I lived in London. Um, and we built this little fire pit area and that's still smouldering away from last night. Um, and this is where we like to sort of sit down, wind away and, and relax in the evenings. So yes, yeah, so I started the, the bus project. I was a, I was a single man at the time um, and started it on my own and then met Nikisha 10 months ago. Yeah. Um, we actually had our second date in here because we were in deep lockdown. Um, and I basically just got the, we had, what do we have, floors in? It was pretty kitchen. much complete. Um, it was fairly complete, but... Just it had no soft furnishings in it. Yeah. Um, so, so you were appointed head of interior design, weren't you? Yeah, I was. <laughs> um, I, I think you kind of made it quite clear that you wanted to keep it quite neutral. Yeah. Um, kind of like creams and whites, but also just kind of adding yeah. nice bits of... Of texture in the bus yeah. so it was like a, a trip to Ikea mm. for a few hours picking bits um, I quite liked the the bamboo blinds um, yeah they give, were really good choice like when they're fully down it kind of gives a nice kind of ambient lighting um, to the bus um, and you introduced me to the world of scatter cushions. <laughs> scatter cushions um, I think I did a few mood boards actually because we weren't quite sure to yeah begin with. Um, some ideas were a bit crazy, and that's when you were like, no, neutral, neutral, neutral. Because yeah. I had the right colours, um, but it didn't quite fit in with the kind of farmhouse feel. Yeah. Um, so we knew we wanted to bring some, some colour in with the plants. Um, so we've kind of scattered those across the bus. Um, and you, that wicker poof that you chose, poof, and, yeah. the, and the really nice. Um, I mean, this rug's gorgeous as well. You picked this Sort one. of hemp rug, yeah. Yeah. Um, and we really upcycled nice, the yeah. table and chairs as well. That was like um, a weekend project we did yeah. down at the farm. We just wanted to use the colours to create space um, so it doesn't feel too cluttered. Um, that was quite important. Yeah, and keep it as open as an area as possible, yeah. wasn't it? While also kind of keeping it yeah. contemporary as well. Um, but you certainly put a nice touch on things. The soft furnishings, I think, were so important in bringing it to life. Mm. Um, and candles, obviously, love candles, especially mm -hmm. at night time. It has yeah. a nice ambience, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Um, and the fairy lights. The fairy lights, yeah, <laughs> were just genius. You're insistent. Uh, it's like laying under the stars at night time, it's really nice. Yeah, um, but it's awesome. Yeah, it's great, we love it. We do. So... I hope you love it too. We're very pleased. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's really hard to pick a, a favourite thing in the, in the bus because when you've worked on it and, and built all of it, you, you sort of <laughs> like all of it, I suppose. But I, I guess our favourite thing in the bus is, is just the way the, the sequence of spaces work and, and that view you get as you, you enter the bus, you turn right and there's this lovely sense of openness and, um, and, and it just invites you into the, into the space you, you, you want to walk in. And we're really, really pleased with how, how that worked. Would I recommend converting a bus into a tiny home um, for those thinking of doing it? Um, yes, absolutely. I'd say take the plunge. Um, I think it's one of those things that you don't need to know the skills before you do it. You can do it on any kind of budget. Um, we managed to, to convert this for £12,000. Um, so you can be thrifty along the way you'll learn so many new skills that, that are applicable to all sorts of life um, and you end up with something you love living in um, and, 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 and something you can be truly proud of. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Um, take the plunge and do it. So we decided to site the bus in a, a really sort of secluded corner on the farm so you got this really nice sense of tranquility um, and this sense of being sort of separate from the, the hustle and bustle of life. Um, we, we sighted the bus between two blocks of woodland. Um, so whilst we kind of knew we were sacrificing views out, um, we, we get this lovely sort of 
wash of green out of all the windows and, and the trees provide natural screening from from the elements and the rain and and sort of provide that additional bit of insulation that we wanted um, and, and sitting in the shade of the trees you get this this lovely shade and it keeps the bus cool um, and also provided a really lovely space where we could could make these little garden spaces so we've managed to put in a, uh, a pallet seat which sort of acts as our outside lounge and an eating area uh, we've also managed to put a hammock up between two of the trees which is just a lovely spot to go and sit and read um, so yeah we're we're really pleased with how the, the bus is bedded into the landscape so yeah that's my bus and my tiny living life which has started thank you